where they have the best of pizza every day made by me, Luigi. <laughs> Salutations, everybody. It's IXLJ, the OG, and welcome to this very special Survivor Series reaction show. So we're getting ready for the second longest running WWE show of the year. Now, first and foremost, before we get too far into this, you may be wondering, why was there no um, AEW Full Gear watch along? Well, you probably noticed there wasn't any content last week on Cole TV. Well, I was deadly sick, that's why. So unfortunately... Um, couldn't really do the watch along, but I did watch uh, Full Gear and thought it was a great show. But here we are, though. Second longest running show in WWE history, the Survivor Series. Um, and it's War Games. So I think that's really cool that they are blending two of some of the oldest um, concepts together. Matter of fact, interestingly enough, both War Games and Survivor Series, believe it or not, debuted the same year, 1987. So, and the fact that like 30 plus years later, and, and here they are like being combined together, it's pretty cool, man. So, oh sweet, there's Ozzy. Um, goddamn, Ozzy's old, but God love him. He's immortal. I'm digging this opening intro, by the way. This is like one of the most badass ones I've seen in a while. So a total of five matches on the card, not a ton, but I like that because it's going to allow a lot of time for the War Games matches. So you've got two War Games matches, a female and a male. Um, if I understood them correctly on the pre-show, it sounds like we're going to kick it off with the females one. Here's something else that's interesting too. To my knowledge, I don't believe WWE, now I'm talking like on the main roster, not NXT, but I don't believe they've ever had a configuration ringside of two rings. So... I don't know. I geek out about nerd stuff like that, so. Oh, I love fucking Ozzy, man. So, yeah, in addition to the two War Games matches, we've got the SmackDown Women's titles on the line with Ronda Rousey defending against Shotzi Blackheart. Your United States titles on the line in a triple threat with Seth Rollins defending against Bobby Lashley and Austin Theory. And, big time grudge match when you have. AJ Styles go up against Ben Balor. So. And of course, we've got the Brawling Brutes teaming up with Drew McIntyre and Kevin Owens going up against the Bloodline in your main event. And just last night, we found out Becky Lynch is back, and she'll be a part of Bianca Belair's team. Uh, along with Bianca, of course, is going to be Mia Yim and Asuka and Alexa Bliss, and they're going up against Damage Control, Rhea Ripley, and um, Nikki... Cross. I almost called her ASH. Oh, God. I've always enjoyed Survivor Series. I, if I had one gripe about this year, not nearly enough time to build it, because, I mean, they only had three weeks because they were just coming off Crown Jewel, but beggars can't be choosers. We're getting more games, and none of the bullshit SmackDown versus Raw shit, which that stuff drove me nuts. And I just thought, they've treated Survivor Series like a throwaway pay-per-view for years, which is a damn shame. Oh my god, that was badass. Ozzy just said, welcome to War Games. It's going to be a fun night, I think. There you see the cage is coming down, and the War Games sirens going off. All we need is Regal to come out and say War Games. It's going to be cool, too. Great arena to have this. The Boston Garden. World famous arena. Or what are they calling it? The TD Garden now? Whatever the fuck it is. It's always going to be Boston Garden to me. They are going to stick with the shit, with the putting them in the two cages or whatever. The shark cages, which... I don't know, they added that with NXT. I didn't hate it, but I didn't think like, ooh, you know, we have to have that. Five minute period, the first period's about over. The advantage does go to uh, the heel team, uh, aka damage control. So they will be sending somebody in. And I guess they do three minute periods. If I remember correctly, back in the day, it was like five minute periods, but oh shit. Nasty powerbomb into the cage. Alright, who's next? Oh boy, it's Io Shirai, not Io Sky, damn it. Alright, now we're coming up on the uh, period, the second period, I guess? Yeah. So, a team from, or a member from Bianca's team about to come out. So, I mean, Bianca's been doing pretty 
fine on her own, honestly. Yep, it's Asuka. All right. Uh, next period, so now we're going to get uh, Damage Control's next member in. I'm going to say it's probably Nikki Cross. Yep. Okay, and here we go with the famous spot where let's throw a shitload of weapons in the ring. That's Alexa Bliss. Who almost tripped over a fucking cord. Good for her. <laughs> Poor Bianca trying to break the kendo stick like a badass. She still broke it though, so it doesn't fucking matter. She's ready for shit. Bianca? Oh my god, yeah. Icky's climbing to the top of the cage. I always feel like this is the strategy on these new war games is they've got to, like when it gets towards the end of all the entrants, like and the baby faces are beat down, it's like, okay, let's bring out a shitload of weapons. Once again, maybe I'm nitpicking, I'm old school, just, I don't think you need it. Okay, they're going to save Becky for the end. I'm going to say this is interesting, you got like all corners of the ring, there's like, Competitors on the top, top rope, battling it out. Getting a bunch of super flexes. And uh, now mommy's coming out. I'm telling you what, everybody's talking like, oh, what if Charlotte comes back and goes against Bianca? That'd be great and all, but to me, the money matchup's Bianca and Rhea. That, that would be badass. Last period, then more games begins. Becky will be the last entry. Here we go, Bailey and Becky going at it. Which, I don't think they've ever really feuded on the main roster, believe it or not. At least not for a significant period of time. Oh shit, there's Mommy and the Man. <laughs> oh, Oscar just blew Mist and Rhea Ripley's. Oh Jesus. I hope Bailey's okay, she just got dropped on her fucking head. Like, that was terrible. Like, I hope to God she's okay. That looked like fucking concussion protocol. Or worse. Adio, Shirai just uh, did a moonsault off the cage. Bianca's grabbing her knee now. I think Bay. Oh my God. I think Bailey and Bianca are seriously fucking hurt now. Like, I seriously, Bailey got dropped on her fucking head. Now let's see Bianca here. She's holding her knee really bad. I don't know if this is just... Oh, I think she caught the weight of fucking Io Shirai. But if you look there, look, Bianca's moving her ankle around shit. Like, I think she's okay, but that's probably going to be pretty fucking sore. Hopefully nothing serious. But Bailey's fucked, I think. I honest to God think Bailey like, fucking has a concussion or something worse. Oh wow, okay, Bailey's okay, she's fucking standing. Uh, I don't know how, that looked terrible. She got dropped on her fucking head. Oh! Hey, she's gonna climb the top of the fucking cage and jump through the table, it looks like. Oh shit. KOD to the fucking cage. And Becky's gonna do a sp Oh, a leg drop through the fucking table off the cage. That's it. See ya. Here we go. Why is there actually hope Bailey and Bianca and the rest of them are okay? Because they took some nasty bumps in this one. Pretty good way to start it. Definitely a WWE 5 war games and not an old school traditional NWA war games, but I'll take it. It was good. So up next we're getting a grudge match. AJ Styles and Finn Balor, a dream matchup really. As you have former Bullet Club leaders going at it. So Finn Balor is impersonating an athletic cup? I think so, yeah. I don't get I don't get the mask, yeah. I mean, it looks like there's pukes underneath. I mean, come on. That's his beard, but yeah. <laughs> and apparently AJ's wearing a mask. A fucking hand. 
Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my wacket hat. <laughs> It wasn't long before our judgment day and uh, the OC got into it. But hey, it's a one-on-one -on -one matchup and it's been pretty good so far with AJ and Finn. A little back and forth. AJ's got the calf crusher on. AJ may win this damn thing. About damn time he wins a match on pay-per-view. Oh, nice counter. Oh! AJ hits a phenomenal forearm to win it. Kind of surprised that was the finish. All right, so up next we're getting uh, Shotzi Blackheart and uh, Ronda Rousey for the SmackDown Women's title. You could see Shotzi getting a big, like, uh, push. I mean, obviously she's going to lose, but... You know, Shotzi taking the fight to Ronda, this one, I'm a little surprised. She's got her shit in, brother. But I think Ronda is about to end it. One of the things that's kind of hard to believe is like that Shotzi was going to pull it off, you know. But I mean, she got her shit in, so it was alright. It's our tribal chief. Because brothers don't shake. Brothers got a huh. Why the fuck is there a Beyblade, like, commercial on the Titron when, uh... Austin Theory comes out. What the fuck? And now they're plugging it. Poor Austin Theory. What the fuck? I'm loving this spot. So Lashley's got the Hurt Lock on Seth. And Theory is on top of him with the sleeper. Theory just got dumped outside. But that... Uh-oh. Seth's going for the pedigree. Is that going to do it? Ooh. Pretty good triple threat so far. He just did a freaking rolling blockbuster. Crazy badass move. That's what Lashley got beat at the uh, Crown Jewel. Oh! Rollins comes in with a splash. Almost won it. I think I said this on the Crown Jewel reaction show. I'm so happy that Lashley has brought back the full Nelson and made it an effective maneuver. And this is a really good triple threat. Outside the War Games match, this is probably my favorite match of the night so far. Oh! Theory steals it! How about that? Nice! Much needed. So, very creative finish. Seth was going to hit the Falcon Arrow. Bobby speared him. And Theory was on top of um, Rollins, and, and yeah, now he's a two-time U.S. champion. Hopefully this is like, a co okay, like a refresh. Let's get back to where we were with you, kid. I like this uh, tension they've been teasing with Sami Zayn and the Bloodline, but this is it, folks. Here we go, main event time. The men's war games match. We've got the bloodline going up against the Brawling Brutes, Drew McIntyre, and Kevin Owens. Uh, surprised to see Kevin Owens in this, considering that there was a... Uh, uh, my understanding was he got hurt on a, a house show. Now, I wonder, are we going to see, like, as many weapons and stuff in this one? So, Pete Dunn's going to start it. Not Butch. Our tribal chief's coming out now. I love how Solo is just staring down the other team in the cage. This is a good two to start it. First period is about to come to an end here, which, man, I feel like it's gone so fast, but... Uh, I love the Pete Dunn working on the fingers and the appendages, if you will. I would expect Jimmy to come out next. Wait a minute. Oh, that's interesting. Jimmy was going to go. Roman stopped him, and he pointed at Sammy and said, you go. And also, I like it that Roman is sitting on a chair in the cage. This is smart. I like this. Plays into the story. 
Sammy kind of took his time getting in there, but that's interesting though. Like every every action there, like that's the best storyline WWE's got going right now. This whole Sammy Zayn bloodline, and I don't mean that like as a bad. It's a great storyline. All right, next period is coming up. We'll see who's coming in for the Brawling Brutes team. Oh, it's gonna be Drew. All right, the bloodline's about to get some help here as this next period's up, and Drew's been beating the piss out of uh, Jay and Sammy. And once again, this spot where we're midway through the match, and now we're getting weapons. I see. I've seen it in all the damn WWE War Games matches, and I guess once again I'm nitpicking here, but I just I feel like this is inevitable. They're gonna put the weapons in the match. Just have the weapons already in the fucking cage. Just let's just call a spade a spade. Oh, Kevin Owens. AO's going for weapons too. Hey, Kevin's looking lean too, by the way. Ah, oh, cheers. That's the one thing we haven't really seen tonight. Like the girls get the kendo sticks. You get one table. Uh, <laughs> the ladders and uh, the trash cans, and the guys get chairs and tables. Oh, the showdown here between Solo and KO. What a great resurgence for Sheamus this year, man. Happy to see him getting a big push again. He deserves it. Future Hall of Famer. Oh, shit. White noise off the second. I like this, how he's, Roman's picking up his team as they're getting ready to encounter the Brutes. I like how Roman dictated all of that. And it's like, you come to me. Oh, wow, we're going to get multiples of these at the same time on all the bloodline. Love it. Oh, I love how the uh, KO throws in a dusty elbow. Oh, shit. Sheamus is still going, man. And now McIntyre comes over to get one on Roman. Nice. That was, that was cool. That was a cool spot. Solo took it. Ooh, Spear. Is that going to be it? Nope. Oh. Butch ducked and Jey Uso hit a super kick on uh, Sami Zayn. Jimmy was going to check on him. Jay's like, nah, fuck that. Uh-oh. Roman's about to spear his ass through a table. Yep. Ooh, rock bottom through the uh, table by Solo. Stunner to Solo. Ooh, look at this showdown with Roman and KO. Pop up power bomb. This is gonna go for a stunner. No way. Oh, wow, Sammy, love it. Making the sacrifice for his friend, against his friend, for the Tribal Chief. Great storytelling in this match, folks. Wow, Sammy hit him right in the balls. That's it. Wow. Really, Sammy, MVP of that. I'd say he proved himself and then some. I love it, Roman. Bring it in, brother. Your family. Oh. Jay hugging Sammy. Accept it. Yay. I love it. The crowd's going nuts, too. <laughs> Sammy doing that goddamn handshake thing. All right, and there you have it. That was Survivor Series this year. I gotta say, uh, I really enjoyed it. Definitely nice to see a change from past year. So overall, I thought the show was fun. I enjoyed it. I love the War Games matches. My biggest pet peeve on War Games matches here in WWE, and I've seen it so many times when NXT obviously saw it on the main roster, 
if we're going to do the whole weapon spiel, just put the weapons inside the cage. Uh, that's, I just, you, you can see that spot coming a mile away. It's usually midway through the match. Um, when a heel is coming out, starts grabbing all the weapons and throwing them in there. They did the exact same spot in both War Games matches. I personally, I don't think you need the weapons, honestly, in my opinion, but that, that's me. I'll tell you what I would love to see. Omit the weapons and let's get some blood, but that'll probably never happen in WWE. But that's okay. It is what it is. That's what blood and guts is for in AEW, right? But yeah, I just, I, I don't know, man. If I'm nitpicking, I just wish they would just have all the stuff in there and it's just... I don't know, like I said, you can see the spot coming a mile away. But let's run down the card. So, uh, five total matches. All was really good for the most part. Um, they kicked it off with the Women's War Games match. Um, I thought that was really good. I, I'm i hopeful um, Bailey and um, Bianca are okay. Uh, along with the rest of the girls. Because, man, that, that there were some nasty looking bumps in that matchup. Um... It was a fun opener. It was a good war. It was a good uh, war games match. So yeah, I dug it. Good way to start the show, and they kept the momentum going, man. With that um, AJ Styles and Finn Balor matchup, that was a fun match. Glad to see that mostly be a one on one match, uh, and seeing AJ pick up the win um, and continuing on that storyline with the OC and the um, Judgment Day. We'll see where that goes. But, uh, yeah, I thought that was a fun that was a fun one to follow it up with. Uh, then we go to the SmackDown Women's Championship with Shotzi challenging uh, Ronda. It's kind of a foregone conclusion. We knew Ronda was going to win. Um, I don't know. The match was okay. It was what it was. But you just you knew Ronda was going over. There was no chance in hell Shotzi was going to win. Nothing against Shotzi, but, I mean, it, it is what it is. Cool to see Shotzi kind of get a title match, but... Honestly, I hate to say this, it kind of almost felt like filler. Uh, definitely probably was the weakest match of the night. Um, then you go into the Triple Threat U.S. title match. There was a pretty good one. Pretty good placement of where that was at in the card, too, being kind of a semi-main event. Uh, and once again, putting the importance on that United States Championship. Uh, I was shocked, really, that uh, Theory won. Good for him, though, man. I love the spot where Bobby got them both in the hurt lock. Uh, it was a good triple threat. Um, and like I say, Austin going over is a surprise, but a pleasant surprise. So hopefully this is like a redemption for him and we see, a, you know, a better side of theory, you know. Uh, so I'm looking forward to see where we go from here. And I honestly, I never thought he would be back in like a top spot this quickly. I thought he was dumb once he lost that money in the bank, so... Um, and then the, the, the stuff all throughout the night, teasing the whole stuff with the bloodline, the dissension of the bloodline, and the men's war games match, which I do think, honestly, from a storytelling perspective, the men's match was the match of the night. Um, definitely a spot fest was definitely the woman's match. I mean, that, like, like I say, is no disrespect to either of the matches. It just is what it is. But the storytelling was excellent. Roman coming out, setting in the dam, just being cool as a cucumber, setting in the chair in the ca the shark cage. I love, like, uh, the way they booked it as far as with the advantage and stuff. I love how, like, Sammy say, like, he, he's, like, he, like, he pulls back the Uso, and he's like, no, no, Sammy, you go. And then working through their thing and the dissension all throughout that match, um... Yeah, the, with the Brutes and, like, Drew and KO, you, you knew end of the day Bloodline was winning this. I mean, come on, man. Come on, it's the Bloodline. It's the hottest faction going. It's the hottest uh, storyline going. But the the story of the match really was, like, is Sammy going to turn on him? And Sammy proving his loyalty. Um, the finish was great. Uh, made KO look strong because it was like, oh, my God, Kevin Owens was going to beat Roman Reigns. And then Sammy coming in, breaking it up. And I also like, too, if you notice, Sammy and um, KO did not touch in that match until the end there. Uh, they teased it, but they never touched. Uh, but everybody looked strong in the matchup, I thought. Um, and, of course, Sammy with the Haluva kick. the Well, the ball shot and then the Haluva kick. And then and letting Jey Uso get the pin. Uh, and them kind of squashing their beef at the end as acceptance was great. I Like I say, great storytelling in that matchup. And the Bloodline 
goes on. Where does the bloodline go from here? I don't know, man. I I think I feel like at the Rumble you'll probably get Sheamus against Roman. I feel like Sheamus is due. Um, probably them continuing on with that feud. But um, all in all, it was a fun Survivor Series. Um, like I said at the beginning of this, I kind of wish there would have been more time to tell the storylines building up to it. But for you know, the focus was War Games, which was it, which is what it should have been. Uh, is War Games going to be the focus going forward every year? I don't know. Maybe. So I, I would, I'd be kind of under that assumption, but we'll see how it goes. But uh, for its uh, debut on the main roster, it was fun. It was a very enjoyable match. Like I say, my biggest gripe is just have the weapons in the cage. Not have it be like where the wrestlers come out and get the weapons. Just, no. Nah. Just have them in the, just go ahead and have them in there. You know, kind of do like they used to do with uh, a or uh, TNA Lethal Lockdown or something, right? With the weapons, I don't know. That's my suggestion. But uh, all in all, WWE did another great show. Uh, I'd say best Survivor Series in years, probably the best one since uh, NXT was involved. So uh, it was a good, solid show. I enjoyed it. Uh, I would have loved to seen some traditional Survivor Series matches out there, but with the replacement of it being more games, it was cool. And I do like how they had five on the card. I think five matches was plenty for this, considering you got to give time to both the War Games matches. Crazy thing is, next pay-per-view, not premium live effect, you're not going to get me to say it, is the Royal Rumble. So, literally, we've come to the end of the year here for WWE, and I think, like, this second part, you know, with Triple H taking over and Stephanie, it's been fun. It's been enjoyable again. I mean, shoot, look, we're actually have been watching these pay-per-views, not premium live events, damn it, uh, monthly, and they've been relatively enjoyable for the most part. So, I mean, they're doing something right, and I can't wait to see the Rumble, what's going to happen there. A lot of time between now and then. Uh, so it should be interesting to see the stories that are told these next several weeks in the WWE. But like I say, overall, I thought Survivor Series was a fun show. I enjoyed it. So, good first outing with um, War Games. Oh, and just to backtrack, how about that intro with Ozzy? That was freaking awesome. I love that. Well, that's going to wrap it up for the Survivor Series 2022 reaction show. Hope you've enjoyed, and as always, please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Until next time, I'm XLJ the OG, and we'll see you around.